Hi, and welcome to this how to play video of Vendel to Viking. Uh, my name is Jon Manker, and this is Robin. And we're going to show you uh, how Vi Vendel to Viking is played uh, and do that by playing a turn or two. So Robin will be seated over at his computer and I'll be sitting here. So we're doing this in uh, Tabletop Simulator, uh, but the uh, art uh, is relatively uh, similar to what we are printing. Uh, however, I, I do want to note that not neither the art or nor the rules are final. So this is the game as it is right now. In this game, you play as a family who is going to uh, uh, try to explore and uh, grow in the Vendel era. Now, the Vendel era is the time before the Viking era. Uh, the game is set up as shown here. So uh, you start with a map in the middle uh, here. And then uh, there is a, uh, here is the map. Uh, here is the achievement board and the formidable uh, people's board. Um, the formidable market. Uh, when you set up the game, you put all these little figurines over here on the achievement marker, um, which are the ones you get to gain points. And you place the venture cards here and the uh, formidables over here. Uh, you also get a family board, and on this family board you find mission cards of different difficulties, uh, and you find uh, family members, which you will grab later on in the game as you grow your family. In addition, you decide who is going to be the starting player, um, and the starting player will act first throughout the game, but uh, in reverse player order, we have we, we're going to choose where we start so we have one of these locations will be our home so to speak and uh, in this case uh, we can see that robin is the starting player so i will be the one who choose uh, my home first and of course i will choose my home over here which is vendel the town of vendel which has given the name to the entire period um, and Robin will choose somewhere else. The Polones. Uh, yes. So to win the game, you have to grab these different uh, achievement tokens from the achievement board, and you do that by integrating formidable persons into your into your family tree and at the end you count points for these and you also count points for the different family members you have out on the board if you compare this with pax viking uh, which is what this game inter interfaces towards uh, there are quite a lot of differences we have the game is is completely uh, on its own so to speak mechanic wise but we have chosen to when when there was an opportunity to try to go in the direction of pax viking for some special things such as there are select you, you select a number of actions and then we chose to try and design it towards four actions per turn because that's what you find in Pax Viking. Uh, we have a map where the color scheme and this, the shape of different components are similar to ones found in Pax Viking, as well as the name tags and the ornamentation, which are to, will be slightly different because it's a different uh, time period, but the, the general style of it is similar. Some of these components are also borrowed from the Pax Viking tabletop simulator module, so some of them might be even more Pax Viking-like than, than it will be in the final game when it, when you come to look and feel. But the game as is has quite a lot of differences. Um, this is not a 
grab the victory style game this is a game where you uh, progress slowly towards a number of most number of points you can rush the end by grabbing two if one player grabs a second orange uh, uh, achievement figurine out here then the game ends immediately but it's still the points that is counted uh, and that will tell if you won or not you progress through the game uh, in a number of turns and each turn is roughly 25 years or a generation um, and when it's your turn you sh choose to do uh, four actions and you select these actions from uh, the available ones and uh, we can also see them they will be on your player boards and so forth but I, you can see them here so there are uh, nine actions each work each family member can do four different actions you do four actions but these are four they can be used for one of four different actions and these are invest journey activate which are the three actions any uh, family member can do and then they can also do their specific actions so the crafters can do invest journey activate or the crafter action and this is quite different from pax viking where you have um, the actions are a more general thing and you represent a a jar and you are it's what you are doing which are portrayed in the game whereas here it's more of how your family is acting in in this world uh, and you have these different family members so you have the the crafters the healers the seers uh, uh, the merchants uh, the inventors and the warriors and to do an action you need to be out in the map and you act where this is located so uh, let's say you have a, a crafter over here in Essex then this crafter in Essex can be used to do the crafter action but it can also do invest journey or activate and if it is um, if it is um, yeah, and activate relative to the position where it is. So, what does these actions mean then? Uh, and let's let's pretend this is a turn and Robin starts. So, what what Robin would like to start doing is probably journey, uh, and journey is the action you do to get family members out from from your your supply here, or actually anywhere. You can take them from anywhere and place them. In a new spot and um, so if you for some reason want to leave a spot or either here in the achievement board where they might end up or from somewhere in the map you can do so or you take them if you have them here normally you take them from here until you run out and then you start redistributing them so uh, robin wants to make a, a journey action and he journeys to his own uh, home here and if you want to play so just moving somewhere within the same region where you, your home is uh, costs one action of your four actions and then if you want to move um, and place a new like establish a new venture there then you place a ship and that marks that you are it costs you two actions that turn uh, if robin would have wanted to go for example to this region or this region it would be a second long ship needed and then for a total of three of his available four actions used for that journey action uh, note also that he flipped this one so uh, every time you do an action you flip that uh, uh, family member so you can easily count that you have done four by summing up number of flipped family members plus ships So Robin chooses to journey twice, and both journeys goes to places in his own re region where he is established, so to speak. And um, that costs him two actions here and two actions there. So one, two of the those ones, and two of these ones. And then uh, it is my turn, and I would like to show some different th different things you can do then with your starting. So I can spread somewhere within my own uh, uh, region that will cost me one action and I can spread somewhere else 
for, to Essex, for example, and that would cost me two actions. But note that in both these cases, I choose not to establish an, uh, a new venture there. Um, and then I could, if I wanted to, I could have spread down here instead of going to Essex. But now I only have one action left. And maybe I should instead establish myself here in Essex for my final action. So let's do that. And then I place my second boat there. So it cost me three to go here. Whereas this one just waits here in Uppåkra, uh, waiting for uh, a future venture to be established. Kind of having small farms and, and that, we haven't really established that, our presence anyways in that, in that area. So when I want to have a new venture, I drag from the pile. There are three piles in the three regions, green, purple, and blue. And that's, uh, that is uh, four actions. Uh, so of those, that was one of the basic actions, and that was our first turn. So let's go to a second turn and just show some more actions uh, that you can find in the game. Uh, now, this is called the generation shift, and uh, at generation shift, we flip everything uh, just to see that we now have actions available again, bring the boats home if we have used them, and then we do um, the starting player starts again. And Robin starts by activating uh, this venture, and activating it will let him have two silver discount on the market board this turn. Now the market board is over here, so everything will cost two less here. And you see the cost down here, uh, three, two, three, four, five over here um, and then for his second action robin has his eyes set on this person and you can see that it's a person uh, that resides in lettuce and that the talent of this person is merchant um, the scales up here and there is a merchant over here so he placed a family member of the correct type in the correct location when he's journeyed on the previous turn. So now the requirements for the invest action, uh, the third of the three basic actions, uh, is fulfilled. He has the correct talents and the correct position. So he takes this, pays four silver, and he don't have four silver, but he has activated the two silver discount, so he can actually buy this for only two, removes two coins, and moves the... Uh, family member he used to the family board and it goes to the merchant space because it's a merchant uh, it has to go there and the person he took goes onto his family board uh, and for his third action Yes, and before he does his, his third action, he will reorganize this board. And here you can move downwards and sideways. sideways. And uh, the idea here is that you can strategize uh, to put things you want in cheaper spaces and things other players might want in more expensive places. And then for his third action, uh, he might want to journey again. So he places one. Uh, family member out and that is flipped because it's now done its action this turn and he will also continue to spread to a empty location maybe yeah and here is this is set up for future turns he can he can have since this is spent now but then will be uh Unexhausted. It's exhausted now. It's been used now. So, but next turn it will be unexhausted. So he can go there, get an adventure there, and still have someone left to do things with. So, spreading to empty locations may be a smart tactic. And uh, here you can see he is now one, two, three, and four uh, flipped family members or ships. So we know he has done four actions. And the game progresses in this way. Um, we have now seen the important basic actions. You journey somewhere, you activate to get the certain uh, different uh, 
abilities you found on the ventures and you do the invest action where you have to match the talent and location of a certain person to get it to your family board and also to get this person into the achievement tree. One detail about the family board here when you start spreading and get this if this now that you have a person here you can spread the following you can put new ones following these white lines so the next one could go here and if you do he would take you would take the uh, card there and that's a mission and these mission cards are things that only you see and if you look at one of the mission cards for example this one it says at the end of the game have majority on three ventures in north and three in the east uh, and then you get the number of points and the ventures and these missions are a uh, well be quite important uh, to to tip the the win at the end um so now you've seen how the missions work and that will also add to your your final scoring so you will get points for these ones you have taken you will get points for how many of the workers you have on the board and also the mission how many of them you actually completed you have to get them first from the family board and then you see what they are and then make your strategy in that direction so uh, one mention one note about the achievement board here you need to place uh, to move outwards following these lines you need to place the correct family members uh, and in this case uh, Robin will place them as if he has taken the actions further on in the game finding the right locations and matching talents and so forth by buying from the market but if he had these two here uh, and he has another merchant or seeress um, he can then place on the runestone uh, achievement so and it it has to be one of those that leads up to it that he places here so uh, go ahead and place one and then he would take this to his uh, board and immediately there there is an immediate effect in the case of runestone the immediate effect is this is a uh, non layout lay, no layout uh, play raid but you can see at the runestone you will activate any one venture even if you don't have a family there so any venture on the board he can activate the effect on that as as a bonus when he grabs this one and then you move on if he wants to grab the green one he has to have someone on portage and to get someone on portage he needs to have someone on series and healer so if he wants to continue here he needs to find a healer include that into his family then find a series or a healer to place here maybe you can do that and in this case he found another healer and now he can go to the pagan to to here and uh, place a uh, either uh, serious or healer following what's ever going what lines are going here and then he plays it there and then he can also go here and get the final one but then he has to have someone residing on all these three now it looks simple enough to have them just laying here but note that three of his series are now in the achievement board which means they're all gone he can have no series out on the on the, the map because you only have three of each of course you can direct your different persons that you get from the map out here in these uh, areas to get more series warriors or crafters but the other three you only have three and two all together and that's why you sometimes need to relocate and he can take to get this one you need to have one here here and here but these older ones, they are not needed anymore. That's too far back in history. So uh, you need only these three occupied to grab the, the future achievement here. In this case, the Asa True Pope. Um, and uh, one more thing about this. If I want to stop him, I can try and find... Uh, find uh, um, 
some some uh, family members and place them uh, here because you need to be tied for the most. Oh, I can't place it there. Sorry, but let's say I place it there. So if I were to place uh, a series and a merchant there, put two series here, for example, then I am stopping him from placing here because he's not tied for the most on all these three places. Uh, but I can't go and st I need to, before I place here, I, I need to have something here and here. And I need to be tied for the most on those two places. So it's it's a struggle of getting um, the kind of most influence over history through this achievement tree. Um, and then just to briefly mention the different actions that you can take with the the, the remaining six actions, we won't show them, but just telling what you can do, uh, which is about uh, moving different family members on the map. Uh, you can exchange ventures on the map, remove other players' family members using the warrior, obviously. You can gain silver or re reverse positions in the market, so you might place some of the family members on cheaper spots di diagonally. Um, you can convert other players' family members into uh, your own type, and you can also add uh, two family members at the same time if you have the healer, which will make you spread much faster. So that's the, the talent actions, uh, which then are unique for each of the family members. And uh, in addition, you have the three basic actions. And you have the advanced and epic instant effects on this one as well, which were the ones that happens when you grab one of the achievement tree uh, things. The 12, in this case, the 12 white and green ones have effects. The orange ones are just uh, points and the most valuable for points. Uh, in addition, I want to mention that we have a solo version of this, which is a kind of bot-based game where you play it against uh, Vendela, a, fic a fictional player, and uh, this is a very strong player, uh, but Vendela has no missions, so uh, you are fighting against uh, a player who is spreading fast and efficient on the achievement board uh, and on the map and making it hard for you, but you have to kind of carve out your space here and try to make the most of your missions in order to beat this. Um, and in this one we also have a cooperative mode, so you can play two players against two Vendelas, uh, or even more Vendelas if you dare. All right, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please uh, ask in the comments here or in the Discord, our official, our uh, Discord channel, uh, which is linked in the in the description of this video. Um, if you have any questions, you can join the Discord through that link. Uh, uh, and I hope you will uh, find a a occasion uh, to play this game because I really like it, and Robin really likes it, and it's tight, nice, um, very intricate little uh, adventure in the Vendel era. Thank you.